was asked to do a review of some fiber from the folks at Wild Wool Farms. And immediately when I got this message, I said yes, because I've seen Wild Wool Farms um, selling fiber on Facebook, advertising on Instagram. I got my hands on some in person here in Washington State at one of the fiber events and I jumped at the chance to be able to do a review of their products here on my channel. Um, and I wanted to share a little bit of background uh, and information about Wild Bull Farms before I get started with the actual fiber they sent me. So uh, I'm going to be reading from their website, which by the way, their website is wildwoolfarm.com. Um, go check it out. Um, there's a lot of beautiful things that I'm tempted to buy that I'm looking at right now, but um, I, I'm just going to be reading directly from the website and keep my screen from going to sleep. Um, a little bit about Wild Wolf Farm. So Wild Wolf Farm was founded, and I'm quoting here, I'm reading from their website, was founded by a family, starting out with 4-H and ultimately becoming passionate about creating something wonderful from nothing at all. We have become masters in our craft, providing our fiber friends with quality wool selection of styles and trends perfect for starting or topping off their projects. Wild, Wild Wool Farm, excuse me, strives to give our customers all of the options to let their creativity run wild. Enjoy your time looking at our offerings and get in touch with any questions. If you're looking for something you do not see, let us know. Um, so yeah, my uh, some of my cousins growing up participated in 4-H and that kind of struck a heartstring of mine. Um, having known folks who participated in 4-H, um, set them up for their careers and livelihood they have today. And just hearing a success story out of that connected to something that I enjoy just really made me happy. Um, but beyond their, their roots and their upbringing, um, the folks at Wild Wolf Farm are really great to work with. They have beautiful products. And like that uh, paragraph says, you could always reach out and ask them for something they don't have posted on their website, <laughs> uh, which I think is really cool. So what the folks at Wild Wolf Farm sent me were two um, sample packs. So we've got uh, one pack of natural fibers that, that haven't been dyed, but they've been washed and processed and ready to spin, as well as a pack that has been dyed with, uh, in this one, some beautiful fall colors of, of reds and oranges and yellows. Um, so what I'm going to be doing in this video is spinning up those sample packs and sharing that experience with you, my thoughts, what I observe, uh, and just how this fiber is in my opinion. So this first pack here has the dyed fiber in it. And you can hear it comes in the crinkly plastic, which kept this nice and protected in the mail. So we've got a couple of Coradale, and the colors here are just fantastic. Merino, which is one of my favorites. Another Merino. <laughs> and a Merino blend with bamboo, which is completely new to me. This pack with the natural colors has seven bumps of fiber in it, which is massive and awesome. So the first one here is Finn, which is a new to me fiber. Shetland, I have spun before, but not in multiple colors. BFL, I don't think I've spun that yet. Coradale, definitely haven't spun that. J 
Jacob. No, but I just washed a whole fleece, so I'm excited to try that one. And Icelandic. And I love that these natural colors have their own little array here of colors of browns and blacks and grays, and of course, merino. <laughs> So first off, the fiber came in plastic packaging inside of plastic packaging, uh, a mailer, right? So the fiber was well protected from the elements, uh, which was really great that it was double packed in plastic because actually the outside mailer was ripped when it arrived. Um, and I know in transit, sometimes they can be a little rough on the packages. Um, so I'm glad that there was that extra layer um, around the fiber. So it was not wet, it was not damaged, um, everything was intact, which was great. Then once you get inside the plastic and you pull out the fiber, um, it immediately poofs up. So you can see here with um, the Jacob, I just took one of each. And then this merino with the different colors, it just poofs back up to life. And it's absolutely fantastic. There is no vegetable matter in the fiber, right? It's clean, it's been processed, it, you know, it feels clean. It does not feel greasy. Um, it's great. The colors are fantastic. Um, the dye is well penetrated in here. Um, there are no white bits, unless it's intentional, <laughs> like in the Jacob. Um, but the uh, the color is is well saturated in here. Um, so, you know, two big plus sides here to to this product. Um, I really appreciate these little labels on each bundle. Um, so as I take these out of the package and I'm moving them around the house working on this project, I can still keep track of what bundle is what breed, right? So these, these are fantastic little labels on here. I decided for this project, I would spin each bump up as its own two-ply yarn. So what I'm doing is taking each of these bundles separately and splitting the roving up into two halves, two pieces, so that I can spin up one as a single, the other as a single, and ply them on each other. So this is all I did to split up the fiber in half just very loosely and I put the half I'm not using back in the label so that I could continue to keep track of what I was spinning and not get them mixed up with each other. Aren't these colors amazing? Before going to the spinning wheel though I went ahead and pre-drafted each of these fibers. So pre-drafting is what I'm doing here and it's just a matter of drafting out the fibers before getting to the spinning wheel and actually drafting as you spin. Uh, this is just something I always do with my fiber. It makes my life easier, it makes the spinning go really smoothly, and so I'm doing that here as well.
Which one should I spin next? Which one? This one, this one, or this one? So all in all, I'm really happy with um, this product that was shared with me. The fiber was um, prepped beautifully in um, roving, so it was easy to spin right out of the packaging. Um, I could have blended these fibers, made roll ags, done all kinds of things, but what I really wanted to do was keep the colors um, with themselves. So I wanted to spin each bundle of yarn just with itself. Each of these is a two ply yarn because um, I wanted to preserve the colors. Oops, dropped one. <laughs> and see how they turn out. So um, some of the most interesting ones, of course, color wise, was this merino. Um, this had four different colors in it orange yellow red and brown and all i did was pre-draft the fiber in the roving and then just spun it and like i said i made a two ply so um, the colors are pretty well mixed in here and i'm happy about that another one that was not only interesting color wise but also because of the blend, the merino with the bamboo, was this one. So this one is more shiny than the others. I, d I doubt you can see that on camera, but it has more shine to it and sheen um, than the others. But I did the same thing with all of these fibers, is all I did was pre-draft the roving out and then just spun it in two halves and so um, the color is blended nicely in here but at a close look I can still see in the two plies you know a pink on an orange or a blend of pink and orange against a yellow bit and it's just really fun so I'm excited to see these knit up um, of course these 
natural fibers, the natural colors, so undyed, um, had blends of white and gray and dark colors like black, like this Jacob. And so it's just um, beautiful. So the singles sometimes had a barber pole of the two colors and then plied against another one. It's just got this extra dimension and dynamic to it. I think it's beautiful. Um, but also what I found interesting to spin um, fiber wise was the Icelandic. Um, I have not spun Icelandic before and this one was a, a bit different because um, because of the wool. So this yarn has very little stretch to it. Um, when I was uh, winding this up for the skein and I was counting the yardage, I noticed this really doesn't have any stretch to it. Like that is the length that it is compared to Merino, which does have stretch to it. Um, and that's just because of the characteristics of the wool. But I thought that was really nice to include in this sample packet is that they're not all the same kind of wool. You're getting that mixture of different experiences. Um, and so I really appreciated that there was a mixture of different kinds of fiber as well. Um, but I also like that some popular things were in there like Jacob and of course Merino, Coradale, um, but there were also blends. So Merino mixed with bamboo, the Icelandic is a different kind of wool. And so I just appreciated that. Of course, BFL is one of my new favorites. Um, and so I was really excited to see that I loved spinning this. Shetland is one I've spun before. It's a fiber that um, I had purchased from a local um, <clears throat> farmer and I washed it and did all that. And so spinning Shetland again just made me fall in love with it again. Um, so I, I thought it was a great blend. And of course the colors could not have been more perfect for fall um, with the reds and oranges uh, and the neutrals. And I'm really excited to knit this up into something. <laughs> I don't know what yet. Stay tuned. But um, it was a joy. So thank you, Wild Wolf Arms, for letting me review your fiber. I think it's fantastic. And I think you all should get your mitts on some Wild Wolf Farm fiber. Uh, I'm going to link to their website down in the description box and I'll probably have it here on the screen as well. Um, go give them a look-see. Um, awesome products. I can't recommend them any more highly. Uh, it was a joy to spin, a joy to work with them, and I can't wait to get my hands on more.